Let's get to our very exciting uh, presentation, Earthship. This is going to be good. Uh, Rick Cruz, take it away. Okay, thank you. Um, since there's so many Navajos here, I'll take a chance to op practice my uh, introducing myself in Navajo. Yat a Rick Cruz Yenisha Simbik a Yenishli Beishnao Batle de Nete Bashish Chi Akatan Tis Naspas Nishandi. I think what I said is uh, I'm from the uh, <laughs> I'm from the wooden shoe clan and I and uh, born for the uh, windmill people. That's because I'm Dutch, okay. Yeah. And uh, and then uh, I uh, when I was real young, I lived in Tisnaspas, a long time ago. Okay. Yeah, Peter McDonald's from there too. Yeah, Peter McDonald's from Yeah. So we're talking about my topic is assigned to me by B, passive solar earthships. So next slide. So you asked me to talk about the design, the history, advantages, and drawbacks. So I think I'll talk about history first. Go ahead. Oh, definition. What is an earthship? An earthship is a type of passive solar earth sheltered home that is made of both natural and un upcycled materials such as earth-packed tires. Next slide. They're intended to be off-grid ready homes with minimal reliance on public utilities and fossil fuels. We can go back a long ways where the ideas of earth-sheltered homes and um, uh, facing the building toward the south to use the sun. Um, so let's go uh, next. There you go. So there you have it, Mesa Verde. Is a earth shelter. It happens to be this stone earth, but um, it's it's on the south facing slope of a, of a nice little shelter there. And earth bermed homes were common around here for a long time. Next slide. The, the earthship idea was pioneered by a rogue architect by the name of Michael Reynolds. He looks kind of rogue, doesn't he? Uh, <laughs> Fat. He looks a little bit like a wizard. Next slide. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Next slide. There, yeah. there he is, a little, looking a little bit better in, in one of his Earth ships. And um, uh, next. So he, he, this has been uh, pub around and publicized. He's been building stuff out of junk for over thirty years. Um, and this is something out of a periodical um, called the Weekly Reader. <laughs> It's called Another Invention that People May Learn About Earth Day is the Earthship. It's an, uh, actually a, not a ship at all. It is a house built to save energy and water. Earthships use solar power for heat and electricity. Solar power is energy that comes from the sun. Next slide. Earthships are made from recycled materials. Old tires, aluminum, soda cans, and glass bottles are some common materials used to build these houses. Many people who live in earthships also recycle their water. When it rains, they collect the filter and filter the wet rainwater. The filter makes the water safe to use for drinking, washing, and cooking. People then save the leftover water for other uses, such as watering indoor plants. There it is, the weekly reader. And they're not that much different from the homes in the Shire. <laughs> they're earth sheltered homes, right? And we happen to have plenty of one of the resources that we use, and they, they use the word upcycle, which is like reusing. Uh, so we'll take a look here. Yeah. So the idea is that if you pack a tire full of dirt, it weighs about 300 pounds, average pickup tire. That's a lot of mass. And that mass, if you look, don't don't change it now. Um, that mass. So if you just add all those tires, and this is a whole wall of tires, that's a lot of mass. Plus the mass behind the tires is the dirt that burned up against the home. So during the day, the heat comes in. There's there's a compact compacted earth floor that absorbs some of the heat, and then 
the heat just keeps going in and in into this these, this mass of tires. So they store the heat. Next. And then at night, the heat comes out of the ground and out of the tires and warms up your space. Next. Same idea. So it's also cooling. So during the day, you can close the shades to the windows in the summer, and the heat gets absorbed by those tires so that um, it stays relatively cool. There's more to cooling in a little bit, I'll show you. So this looks a little complicated. Earthship is really not just a solar, passive solar heating, it's a whole bunch of other things. Uh, so you see a wind generator on some of them, and you see solar panels, batteries, mm -hmm. or it could be a grid inner tie. Um, there's um, an inverter here, um, things we've already talked about here in these courses. The water you collect it off the roof, and this design, we'll talk about the roof there because that ain't right. Because this is facing south, right, to absorb the, unless this is in the, um, uh, well, whatever, it'd be facing north if it's in the southern hemisphere. But you're collecting water off the roof, running it through a filter, pumping it into a pressure tank, and using that for a bunch of things. You can also bypass the, uh, use the gray water that comes out of your sink and everything and run that into your toilet and use that to flush it. Yeah. And then there's a solar septic tank. We can talk about that a little bit more later. Next slide. Oh, by the way, there's tons of stuff on YouTube and, and the internet about our ships. So basically you build a, uh, a U-shaped structure and berm it, or you build it into the side of a hill, which is the ideal thing if you pick your site just right. Um, and then these tires are all pounded and full of dirt, and we'll talk a little bit more about how that pounding goes. So this is facing south. We're actually 15 degrees to the east of south because if you're, uh, you want to catch the morning sun to start warming it up early. Next. You also need to insulate, you kind of need a thermal blanket. If this is your berm and you've got soil in here, then you want to put in some insulation so that you're only heating up, your heat is absorbed into this space about four feet away from the house and it goes all the way around to the back as well. And that is because otherwise this will continue to draw heat out of the house and it can be kind of chilly at night. But if you have this kind of a thermal barrier about four feet from the house, it makes sure that this portion is all that's heating and you're not heating the, the whole earth. <laughs> um, you also would want to put insulation under the flooring, ideally, to keep from losing too much heat into the ground. It doesn't have to be right below the floor surface, but somewhere down there you want to limit the loss of heat into the ground. Next slide. And this is just showing it from the back side. This, this uh, two-inch rigid styrofoam would go all the way around the home. Next slide. Cooling can be done uh, in a unique way. This has been around for a long time, too. The um, uh, Arabs have been using this. Uh, they've been using this technology in the Middle East for a, for a long time where you have a place, space underground, and it doesn't need to be under the house. It can be out behind it where it's burned up here. What, what's the average temperature of the earth if you get below the frost line? 52 to it, it's, Yeah, it's from somewhere between 50 and 60, 52 to 60. And so that's pretty cool. So if you have a bunch of culverts sitting out here or down here, and you have a a vent running into the house, then that's cool air. Well, if it's down below, you have to pump it because cool air tends to settle and hot air rises. So you might need to use a fan or something like that. But if you do it from the berm and inside, that coolness will just move into the house. Next slide. So here's a guy describing this. Uh, I just took this picture off YouTube, but. Um, couple things about the pounding of tires. Um, there's several ways to pound tires. One of them is 
the way they've been doing them up in Taos for a long time. That's where Michael Reynolds is from. And Michael um, has his workers all just pounding these tires with a sledgehammer. And you, you start out with a piece of cardboard in the bottom so it covers that hole so the dirt doesn't go out the hole on the other side of the tire. Pack it really tightly and somebody's constantly shoveling uh, dirt in there. This gives you, this is a, the one of those culverts for cooling and there's that rigid insulation we talked about. Now another thing about pounding tires is you don't want to do it straight up and down at least on the back walls because you want it to be stable so about every inch and a half to three inches you you offset every tire that you put in and you do it like building blocks you or regular bricks you stagger them so that there's one laying on top of the intersection of the two of the two below it so I think you understand what I mean next slide yeah. any questions yeah okay. what do you have a question uh, about that the tire size no very, you know, yes, yeah, right. That's important. So the tire size, I learned the hard way, is you want to get the tire size that the tire companies are selling the most of. <laughs> so when I first built my, my, my first Earthship, the size that was on my pickup was the size that everybody had. And then they started selling cars with 16-inch wheels instead of 15-inch wheels. And it was a lot harder to get... <laughs> We, start, we got the tires that were the same size as my pickup again, and it was hard to get them. We had to go all the way out to the through landfill to find tires that were the right size. But if you go to the tire companies, they'll actually pay you to take them off their hands because they have to pay a dollar and a quarter for every one that they put in the dump. Um, so so they, they actually paid me 10 cents a tire to take them off their hands, but we only took one size. You can use smaller ones on the top, uh, higher r rows if you want to, but it's just nice to have all one size. So, you know. How do you connect it? No, I mean, you know, they kind of shift sometimes. Well, the on. they won't shift much because they're 300 pounds. Um, but that is a per important question because it's really important to have them on undisturbed earth. In other words, you don't want to be putting dirt under them packing it because then they will settle so you're right that's um, that's uh, the way um, the, the, the important thing but they're 300 pounds a piece so they're not going to move much except for downward <laughs> just the gravity and that's why you don't even need a foundation because they're so heavy that that is the foundation so the foundation is the undisturbed earth um, I'll show you more about that in a little bit next slide so what are the advantages? Um, the env uh, environmental uh, advantages are sort of obvious. Um, you know, you're, you're heating uh, home but using the sun, the passive solar. Um, the, you're using something they have a hard time getting rid of, uh, tires. And um, it's low-cost construction if you build it. So this is kind of an important thing. The average cost of a earth ship is about the same as a stick home, regular uh, home built with two by fours. The difference is that with the earth ship, it's 80% labor and 20% materials. And with a regular type of construction we do, like probably this house, is 80% um, um, materials and 20% labor. So that's an advantage and a disadvantage. Um, it's very labor intensive, so around here where there's a lot of unemployment, uh, this is a, a good thing. In fact, um, what we, um, the, the three that I built, or I didn't, I didn't build, but the three that we had built for us was, were, were built by men in a recovery home for recovering alcoholics. So they had a lot of time on their hands, they needed jobs, they needed the money to pay the rent at the, at the halfway house. And so we hired them to build these homes. And when they're sober, they're very good workers and very creative. Um, the utility costs can be extremely low, especially if you actually are, have solar panels. You're getting water from the sky. Um, 
And uh, there's, I know I've heard of one lady up in Taos that her total utility bill was $45 a year. Um, so that's, that's pretty impressive. And that was just the propane that she was using. Um, the, they're comfortable in general. They, they can be pretty comfortable. And, and they're cool in the sense of being unique. <laughs> uh, but uh, they, they can be very comfortable to live in. They, there's a few issues about comfort, and we'll come back to that. Next slide. So here's something up uh, probably in Colorado that they're building this. And, you know, you can build a lot of structures out of these. It's kind of important to make sure that they're very stable. Um, I think they kind of frown on this kind of thing where the walls come out between, and they're not staggered because they're on both sides. So you can't stagger them. You can't lean them into the hill. Um, but... Um, this technology is being used all over the world now. In fact, um, Japan is uh, building a lot of their prisons out of tires. They have a, you know, they have a cheap labor force, free materials, and um, it's pretty hard to dig a hole through <laughs> all those tires if you're trying to escape. So um, I was thinking, you know, the, the Navajo Nation needs a. Uh, uh, needs uh, a lot more, more and better jail space, and this is an idea that that could be implemented there. Next slide. So this was the second home we built, um, and the first you lay your first course of tires, like I said, on undisturbed earth. Next slide. Here's where we made a mistake. Where is that? This is just north of town here. Yeah, we built three north of town just by the Gramerco area. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so um, I told my workers, and I told the foreman, you know, you you got to do this on undisturbed earth. Well, he cut, well, thought he could cut a corner right here, and he he just packed the dirt really good, really well, and um, thought he could get away with that. Well, we had some settling problems after that later on where we had to um, add some some height <laughs> uh, where it settled. But because of, because he didn't take us, I should have made him start over and instead of letting him go ahead and do that because that made a big difference. These these tires here, the weight is so much, it just pushed down on that pack. You can't pack it hard enough to be like undisturbed earth like it's over here, okay? And that's them working on it. This are, they got their third layer up. It's nice to have a source of water so you can, um, it, the, the tires pack a little better, better if they're a little bit moist. It's very important to do these very level. You know, we use a level for every tire, level it in both directions, and so every layer is equally level. And you, at the end, you just kind of pound them really tight with, um, with, with a, a smaller sledge just to get them just right level level every layer you can use a hose as a level because if you run a hose across from one to the other it, you can tell whether the whether they're level or not <clears throat> anyway that's a How much gap do you have between the tires what yeah the gap is is what you see here yeah. it's um and and what you do is uh, after you've put it all up you um fill these gaps in with um mud mud and beer cans <laughs> uh, or, or soft drink cans or whatever. If, uh, if you have a harmonica that doesn't work anymore, you can throw that in there too. <laughs> what, what is that? Party. Oh, no, no, I'm not suggesting that we party. <laughs> so, um, the next slide. <laughs> uh, that, that's my one of my favorite dogs. He's in dog heaven now, I guess. His name is Herkimer. You'll see him a few times here. Next slide. So here they are, they've, they've finished uh, the tires, they've put a bond beam up here, and there's several ways you can do that, but they just built forms and poured cement and stuck uh, anchor bolts in there. Um, and so this is the east entrance, um, and um, they're just doing the flooring. Next slide. And we, we got flagstone from up by McGaffey. Uh, there's a guy up there that has a quarry that delivered it for us, and that went into the kitchen area and the living living room area. Next slide. 
and it's kind of coming together. Next slide. That's how it looked inside after some time. Next slide. There's the outside without the color code on the stucco. Okay. We're going to back it up. Sorry. You can see all those arrows. Um, so, um, well, they always want to use bottles, so we put a bunch of beer bottles in the in along the door post, and and one of the residents in the halfway house built this beautiful door. Next slide. And that's used. That could be used to lumber too, I suppose. Oh yeah, it could. Recycle. It could. Yeah, it has. It kind of has to have a really solid. Um, uh, plywood core and then you can do every, whatever you want on the outside of it. So how do you pack a tire instead of using manpower and muscle power it can go a lot faster. The, this, this is a rate limiting step on, on building an airship. Uh, the first airship we built it took us um, about a year to pound all the tires, about 300 tires. With this thing you, you could build, do about 100 a day so it took us uh, like three weeks, so it makes a big difference. So what this is is a uh, landscaping tamper, and they made a special head for it, shaped like a grapefruit. And what that does is it gives it causes radial distribution of the dirt. So the rate lowering step here now is these guys can't work fast enough filling it up with dirt. They have a bobcat that comes running full of the full thing of dirt, and the guy shovels it in there, and 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 it takes them about five minutes to. To fill a tire. Does the ladder get your dirt uh, composition? It's almost all just from the site. That's what we used, and that's what they recommend most of the time. It, it's nice to have it a little bit moist, and that's about that's all that probably matters, unless you have some really rocky kind of dirt. But even you know, throw rocks in there and everything, and just. Did you do any testing on the on the soil in the area? Did What's not. Nope. Then um, and um, it wasn't required. The only time we had to do any testing was for the septic uh, area. What's that hose for? What? The hose. The hose. That's an air compressor. Oh, this is this runs off of compressed air, okay. and I found out that you need a lot of compressed air to run one of these. I bought one of these, and um, and you need. I, I bought to buy two <coughs> gas-powered um, air compressors to to build up enough pressure. Plus, it had a pressure tank reservoir that kind of kept it going but it, it, it would slot things down if you just used one compressor or you can get one of those great big compressors that you see them running jackhammers off of that would work too um, we could rent that and, and given the fact that it only takes about three weeks it might be worth just renting it um, so the one we have didn't have this kind of a grapefruit type thing it had next slide it was just kind of a flat thing mm -hmm. And that flat thing doesn't do nearly as good a job, Only the, although these guys do a tire in five minutes. Using a sledgehammer, it takes two guys an hour to do four tires to get by comparison. So it gives you some idea. So using a tamper pollutes some, it, but it also um, saves you a lot of time um, and makes it more cost effective. Um, you can use these. The, the same thing, I saw, I was down in uh, Ensenada, Mexico, and there are a whole bunch of places where they just use these as retaining walls. Just, um, you know, the next tire comes in four inches from here, and then four inches and four inches, so it leans into the hill, and it makes a good, pretty good retaining wall. Uh, you can see them on the, in Albuquerque, if you're coming out, across, when you cross the Rio Grande, there's a whole bunch of tires holding the earth back up there on the right side, uh, on the, on the, North side of the road, uh, way up on that little mesa there above, above the Rio Grande. Huh? Decoration of your Christmas. Santa Claus and reindeer. Oh, is that what they have there? Yeah. Okay. I, have a, I guess I stayed away from Albuquerque on Christmas. <laughs> okay. Uh, next slide. Well, this is just the picture of the, uh, the first one we built. Um, and uh, we, it gives you a little bit of picture of an overview. Um, we built it a little bit into the hill, so this was the natural ground level right about here, so some of it's built in underground. This wall we made out of tires and straw bales, so the base of it was tires, and we pounded rebar in there and 
pounded the rebar through the straw bales to hold them in place and then put chicken wire over them and stuck at them. And it's held up pretty well. Next slide. Where's that built at? This is at Gumberco. This is north of here. Is it? Is it? Yeah. Uh, uh, it, it's uh, M&R, right past M&R, right? You go in at M&R and drive north. You can drive by it. Um, this one's rented out. Uh, I, the other two are sold. Um, I've been talking. We talked about a tour, but I, 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 <laughs> I don't feel like driving around with <laughs> this pony of mine and everything. So, but I, I, I think I could get permission from these people if people wanted a tour. In, in Taos, they charge like 15 bucks a tour, and then you can go in and see a few airships. So um, I might be able to talk to the owner and say, hey, you know, I want to make some money. You could offer to tour your place for five bucks or something. Is that on yours, too, the one that goes out to the uh, loop? Uh, oh, no, no, that's my brother's. It's a s structurally insulated panel Hogan. Yeah, I think some yeah. of them are missing. That's what some of the panels? Yeah. No, that could be, I don't know. Maybe it got blown away. <laughs> oh, no kidding. Um, so, um, anyway, this is just another view of it. There's a whole bunch of views here. We're going to go pretty fast here through these next ones. Next slide. This is a, here's Herkimer. Okay. In the bedroom. Make, oh, and what you can see here is this one of the kind of a, oops, uh, one of the kind of disadvantages is that. Um, Oh, this is the speaker. Um, disadvantages is that the um, wall has to be, you know, I remember I said the tires have to be offset. So this wall is leaning into the into the earth, so we just tried to use that to make shelves. But it's kind of unusual to have a wall that doesn't go straight up and down. <laughs> um, but and, and then this is called is an earth cliff cliff. This is the actual ground level of the house. They make some nice places to sit, um, but it kind of takes up some of your space. And this is actually a tire wall going this way. The, it, the, the technology of Earthships has evolved over time, and they don't really do this anymore. But um, So the back wall, they might do that, but the rest of them... They probably wouldn't uh, put this earth cliff here. So what you do is you just run some uh, chicken wire over the dirt that's there and stucco it. <laughs> um, so so that this is the ground level, and so this is underground, all this from here to here. Next slide. Um, so this uh, picture from that, from that bedroom looking into the m main large room, and... Um, Anybody know why, why there's a dark wall and then a lighter wall over here? What this sunlight. Sunlight, yeah. What about sunlight? It's blocking some of it right there. Well, it's absorbing. It's, a shadow. it's not a shadow. What it is is it's that's a desert rose stucco and this is Navajo white stucco. Oh. What it is, the sun comes in at, at winter solstice. This is the angle of the sun. At winter solstice, when the, when the sun is at its lowest, so you want a dark surface to absorb the heat. Over here, you don't it don't matter. So, it, almost all the airships have this little kind of a dark line that um, is painted dark or stuccoed dark to absorb more heat. And you'll notice we'll come back to this later, but the these slope of these windows is such that. It's 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 60 degrees from horizontal, so that at winter solstice the come the sun is coming in directly, and it's less likely to reflect off of the window, so you get maximum absorption. There, is this. Also, what? I'm sorry, is there also a sundial? <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess these beams might be used as a sundial, because uh, they 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 move with the sun. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Um, so, and th uh, this floor is that dark sandstone that you see around on top of mesas around here, because it's got iron in it, and it's, it's, uh, it's stronger than the yellow sandstone that's underneath it. So you see those kind of 
they're bigger and they look kind of like hoodoos. Uh, uh, and, um, and, and so this was, uh, what, this whole flagstone floor was done by uh, one of the residents of the halfway house. He used to work for Union Pacific Railroad and he got into trouble with alcohol and then he um, came to our halfway house and he, um, I think he did, I ran out of battery, I don't know. He, um, um, I gave him a job building, doing the floor and um, ten years later, I ran into his wife uh, at the ER, and he and I asked her how, how hey, how's this guy doing? And she said, "Well, he's still sober today." You know, so um, building a nurseship can be help help somebody with their sobriety too. Um, you know, having people have a misconception that if you um, if you're poor, you're you're um, more likely to have problems with alcohol. Well, in fact, uh, the more money you make, the more likely you are to have that problem. But it also makes you want to keep going. If you have a job, you have something to lose. So physicians have one of the highest rates of alcohol addiction uh, of any profession. Um, well, we're getting off the topic here. <laughs> uh, I say that Paul, Paul and George and I used to work together at the Department of Behavioral Health. So. <laughs> um, anyway, um, so another thing here, this is a planter, and the water from the sink drains into that. You have an option, you have a, a valve that you can let the water run into here, or you can run it into the gray water system. Um, and the, the, so this helps to water this just by the water you're using in the sink. Um, and um, my daughter planted a uh, tomato seed here once, and you know, we had this huge tomato plant here that was growing, growing all the way from from here all the way up here. There was a couch sitting here, and it was <laughs> overflowing on the couch. At any one time, there were 200 tomatoes on that. And it it really likes this this greenhouse effect. This is kind of a greenhouse here, and and it just really thrived on it. Next slide. You can see I had a pony back then. It was about 10 years old. <laughs> uh, different one. I upgraded this year. Um, you know, we, we, this floor is an earthen floor. It's made out of, because um, it's a fair, well, no, this, is, this is still that flagstone. There's another place where it's earthen. This is just a concrete slab that we built that put the um, tile on. Uh, next slide. Go, oh, back up. Another beautiful door built by one of the guys. Oh, yeah. yeah. Next slide. I so there's. Have you doors. What? I have you doors. Doors. Heavy enough that I don't like lifting them. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Um, probably. More five hundred. No, no, probably about eighty to hundred pounds. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm just guessing because I have had to lift them to adjust them when they, when the, when the dirt settled in that one house. Um, but here's another planter that comes off the uh, bathroom uh, sink, and water, it waters here. So um, we've had to remount those pipes sometimes because the roots tend to get into them. <clears throat> I'm sure there's some good, your permaculture people would have a good solution for that. <laughs> um, <No>. Next slide. <laughs> oh, we're back in the bedroom again. Uh, next slide. Uh, mm -hmm. There's the bathroom. It has fancy bathtub and uh, a, a washer dryer from Italy. Uh, you both wash and dry your clothes in the same unit. Next slide. Uh, keep going. Keep going. I should have I should have deleted some of these. There's Herkimer again. There you go. You got a wide angle view from Truck Vendroon and the guy that you started the Gallup journey. <laughs> um, so um, it has a pellet burning stove here for a little extra heat. These Lotias, Art Tom was my con my foreman, and he says, "Oh, I put one of these things in the jewelry store. I'd like to put one in your house." So it has two of these, one on each side of that big beam. Um, it? It's just called a Latia. It's decorative, but I'm going to put some solar tubes in there someday. <laughs> They're sitting up in my attic, and I just need to put them in. Um, there's also skylights. 
what happened with this this building? <laughs> it's kind of interesting. I you know I I actually got to talk to Michael Reynolds a few times about what the project was doing, and one of his architects came down and inspected it after we started building it. Well, I wanted to get this going because I wanted these guys to get employment, so they. So we went ahead and just laid the tires out um, you, by looking in the book. There's three books that are about this in the library. At least they were in the library, and I hope they're still there. They're called Earthship 1, Earthship 2, and Earthship 3. And they show you pretty much step-by-step step how to do this. Well, we didn't have our... We were waiting for our architect's design, and so we just went ahead and laid the tires out the way they're diagrammed in that book. Well, I didn't realize it was just diagrammatic, and I made it way too big. <laughs> So it's it's a nice big room here, but it's too deep. He says, "Well, you got you almost have a cave there. You don't have enough light here in the back, and and so we really should put some solar tubes in there. Um, but um, and it's too wide. So we had to, the the building inspector said I had to put a big beam across here, and uh, put a, a, a four by four beam here, and then there's a steel beam on the outside that holds the other side of that wood beam." Um, yeah, next slide. It's another view of the same place. So this floor here is what I was trying to talk about as a dirt floor. If you have a low traffic area, you can do, and this right here too, you can do, make the floor out of dirt. You put the first layer is uh, mud and gravel from the site. The second layer is mud and gravel and plaster sand from the site. The third layer is um, a mixture of dirt from the site and um, plaster sand and uh, straw and um, and then you, you wait for each layer to dry and make sure it's all level and uh, on the third layer after it's dried you put a coat of um, a mixture of more mineral spirits and boiled linseed oil and it really hardens it up and then you uh, can put a coat of uh, polyurethane on the top of it and that gives it a nice sheen and makes it Easy to clean. What is plaster sand? Plaster sand? It's just the sand that if you, um, you know, <laughs> when you, when you, if you get a scratch coat for stucco that doesn't have, a, it's not a one coat thing, you, you have to add a certain amount of sand to it. It's just uh, mixed in with your stucco or it's, it's just a nice clean it's sand clean, that's, yeah. it's clean. It's been washed so it doesn't have any dust in it. Yeah. So how thick is that floor? That floor is about, it's almost six inches, if you count all the three layers, yeah. No, no, about six inches. Maybe a little less, yeah. So you could, here's the, you can't see it very well, but there's a, that's where the tube comes out here and runs in here for the draining the sink out from the water. Next slide. Okay, Water from the Sky. This is another book that Michael Reynolds had written and um, it talks all about how to collect water, filter it, pump, uh, uh, use, using water from the sky. And that works to a certain extent, but we have a really long dry season, so uh, we have supplemental water from uh, NTUA, actually. Next slide. Water from the sky, next slide. Slope matters. Remember that, first, that earlier picture I said, you know that slope is the wrong way. This is where they built the first airships with a big front window facing south and sloping down this way. Well, what they found out, since they want to harvest as much water as they can, that this is really a bad design because if it snows here, the water evaporates before it melts. But if you face it to the south, it melts quickly and fills your cisterns. So, so you really don't want to have a north-facing slope. You want to have a south-facing slope. They, they did something else, if, I guess we could go back and we might see another picture of the earlier version of it. Next slide. Um, I think we'll skip these. They're, they're kind of water treatment cells. Uh, it's kind of complicated, but it's, it's, they, it's a process where you run your gray water. What, anybody know what gray water is? Everybody know? Yeah, in the kitchen. Kitchen, kitchen sink, the shower, the shower, shower yeah. anything that's not black water. Uh, uh, laundry, the black water is from your toilet. Okay, so anything that's not toilet water can go into the, and 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 you can go into those planters in the front, and they uh, have designed a whole system to where 
you have different layers of gravel and the plants actually clean it up quite a bit and you have a, a kind of a filter on the, this is on the inside um, but this is actually a picture of the outside but this is take, how to handle the black water it runs here and it goes to into a tank outside called an evapotranspiration tank and the state of New Mexico allows that as a method of taking care of your black water waste instead of a leach field or a sewer system so uh, this is like a big you make a big swimming pool about five feet deep and line it with dry rubber and um, and then you fill it with anything <laughs> part of it you fill it with anything big 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 boulders at the bottom throw in some uh, slight chopped up uh, plastic bottles and glass bottles and then toward the top you put more uh, finer gravel that helps to filter things out and and keeps the soil on the top from from filtering down um, and then these plants clean clean the water up pretty good and then you can use that only for one thing and that's to flush your toilet with um, and and that saves you a bunch. so you what you're doing is you're taking the water from the sky and then you're cycling it at least four times you're using it for your sink and you, or your bath and then you're take and then you're running it into the uh, to this gray water and it's serving a function there of uh, growing plants and stuff inside and so some some pictures I'll show you later there's some pretty fantastic little gardens inside the houses and uh, this is outside it, it, the you plant trees in there that evaporate the water fast and transpire it actually and this is just a regular septic tank on the outside and they build a, a little um, solar greenhouse on top of it it keeps it nice and warm during the winter and um, and uh, keeps the biologic process going so that it doesn't just stagnate as far as the um, bacterial growth and everything. Next slide. Uh, this <coughs> is another picture of the same idea, basically. Drawbacks. There are some drawbacks. One is that it's the, there are evolving solutions. So the things that they thought would work at first didn't work so well, like the slope of the roof and things like that. Financing is, is a trick. Um, if you live, if you build an earthship in Taos County, you don't have any trouble financing it. One of the president of one of the banks there lives in an earthship, and uh, I went and visited him, and he said, oh, yeah, "I'd be glad to finance your earthships." And then he found out we live in McKinley County, and said, "No, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what uh, what the uh, comp there's no comparables there, and so forth." So that may change someday. But um, the other thing is, I really think that the USDA should be financing or guaranteeing the loans on this because USDA is guaranteeing loans on uh, these big motels they're building around here, the Marriott and, and so forth. They're getting $5 million loans that they're guaranteeing them that if they, if they grow broke, the bank doesn't lose anything. So they're guaranteeing loans uh, in that area. So I think if somebody could get the FDA to help finance or guarantee the loans on these, I mean, if we're trying to beat the global warming crisis, we really ought to be willing to finance things that are so much more energy efficient. Anyway, that's my soapbox. <laughs> They're labor intensive. That's an advantage and a disadvantage. If you're going to build it yourself, that's fine. Uh, if you're going to have, hire somebody else to build it, you're going to. That's an advantage for them. They, you're giving them employment, but it's a lot of work. Um, it's a paradigm shift. The question is, is this a good fit for you? In my case, I decided I'd rather stay married than live in a nurse ship because <laughs> my wife didn't want to live in one. So it's, it's an unusual, different thing. So it's not always a good fit. Next slide. Next slide. What happened on that slide? Oh, go again. There, that's not a good fit. <laughs> Gandalf in a, in a Shire home. <laughs> go back. <laughs> yeah. Back, back, back. Oh, go back. Keep going back. Yeah, keep going. So here's here's one of the drawbacks. So I mentioned that, you know, we had these um, these windows that are slanted, and they do get a maximum gain of heat in the winter. And they have these shades that you can drop down at night to keep the heat in, and then raise them in the morning to let the heat, sun in. Or in the winter or in the summer, you can drop these down during the day and put them up at night, and it, it helps to keep them cool. Problem is, with this angle, 
the spring and the fall, the whole place can get too hot. Now, fortunately, well, unfortunately, we don't have any transoms or window. The, the new ones have a windows at the bottom here that you can open so that the heat, wind come, the air comes in, pushes the hot air out the um, the skylights. Those are operable skylights that we have. Um, <clears throat> So, any other any questions? I'm, I'm going kind of fast here. I don't want to put people to sleep. Will the snow build up? Like, the, the would side? the snow build up on the sides? Yeah. Well, it's facing south, so you might get a little bit along the bottom, but no, it's um, it's facing south. So, uh, and and the slope is it's 60 degrees from horizontal, so it's not likely to have much problem. Now, if you get down to 30 degrees, like some of the solar panels. Uh, that would be, be the ideal angle he, around here, 27. They can get snow on them for a few days. Um, but um, anyway, so this is um, so this is a disadvantage because it just gets too dang hot. We put some shade cloth on here, and uh, I had sold this, and the guy I had to repossess it because the guy wasn't making his payments. But the there was I had a shade cloth on here and it got kind of loose at the bottom and it flapped and flapped and flapped and it broke this window. Uh, it was double pane so it didn't break all the way through but it broke one of the windows. Next slide. So now when they build them, they build them with straight up and down because it's a compromise. You don't get quite as much heat in the in the fall in the winter but you get don't get near so much heat in summer. Now the other thing is. The sun's way up here in the middle of the summer, so you don't have a problem in the summer so much because you got this little canopy. It's just it's about one and a half feet um, extending out, a soffit kind of thing. So that keeps the sun from going in in the in the summertime. Um, so this one was this one was built in ninety five two thousand five, and that other one was built in ninety three. And this is that solar greenhouse over the septic tank. And this is the trans evapotranspiration uh, tank, or like a swimming pool, like I mentioned. Next slide. Next. So now I guess a whole bunch of pictures to show you, but just to show you that sustainable doesn't have to mean primitive. So I'm just going to go one of, as long as Bill wants to look at it, we'll look at it. I don't have. Colorado? Um, I don't know where this one is. It looks like Colorado. Could be Taos. This one's not quite done. Those are bottles. Those are all bottles. Yeah. A lot of vodka. <laughs> I think these are cans here and bottles here. Cans, aluminum cans. This is the aluminum. Yeah. Vegas, just like. Yeah, Vegas. Oh. Fancy tub. That belongs in the Shire too. Yeah. yeah, well, a lot of these do. Look at Isn't that awesome? Those are banana trees. Are banana yeah. Do they actually grow bananas? Yeah. 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 Some of them. <laughs> if you go online, you'll find some that have pictures of bananas in them. Um, I tried to plant a banana, it didn't do well. But I'm not a real good gardener. I should Maybe probably. Coconuts. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'll be too tall. I mean, they have the pygmy coconuts. I don't know. You know who that guy is? Dennis Weaver. Dennis Weaver, yeah. yeah he made him famous. So yeah, he he did a PBS thing on building ownership. Uh, he was on Gunsmoke and uh, McLeod. This is inside his house. Actually, it was five years or so after he died that he died. <laughs> this is I think this is Michael Reynolds' home. Isn't that fantastical? <laughs> that looks like that would fit right in with. A hobbit, so. Yeah. yeah. You don't have a round door. That's the only thing. Mm -hmm. Lots of black. Lots of bottles. Yeah. The one breaks the rest. Huh? The one breaks down the bottom, but the rest comes. <laughs> now we got. No. Some, uh. -uh. Because it's all here. concrete around it. What? Now we got oh yeah. Some solar to talk about. Yeah. Are those water in the middle? The what? The two solars. The these. Water? These two. It like might be for hot water. I don't know. And they the look like it. Other ones are or, yeah. yeah. Uh, or they could be um, active solar heating, possibly, oh. too. Yeah, thermal. Could be. <coughs> like the ones B has on her roof. Yeah. 
<coughs> well, this is the last, well, the second to last slide. So they have workshops up in uh, Ta Taos or actually all around the world where people who want to learn more about earthship building sign up and they, they pay them to work on their they earthships. Work on them, yeah. yeah. Questions? Uh, did I did I go too fast? Or? <laughs> that was uh, near and dear to my heart. <laughs> um, um, I have good. two questions. Yeah. The first question, I remember you said that for these old kind of used tires, they don't really charge you for them. If you can just haul them away, they might even sometimes pay you, or they just won't cost you for it. Where specifically did you get all those tires? Um, well, like I said, well, well first of all. Um, they paid. They paid me ten cents a tire to take them off their hands. Um, they um, and you know they got to pay a dollar and a quarter for every one they put in the dump. So I said, okay, this is the size I want. This is I asked them, well, what size is popular right now? And then, and then I said, this is the size I want. And it's it's kind of important to look at all three aspects of the size. Uh, there's uh, the width and the the rim size and the, the length from the rim to the tread. Um, that, that's all those, what those numbers on the tires are. So so they paid me for it, and I probably could have gotten even more than a, a dime a piece. But um, uh, I tire places here in town. Sh Schaefer, Mr. Tire Schaefer. was my main supplier, yeah, right. um, but I, I think uh, just about any of them would do it. Um, just any landfill. And I went to the landfill out by the by Peru. When I ran out of the size that it, because I didn't, I didn't think ahead that that tire is not popular anymore. Well, they have to separate the tires at the landfill so you can find them. Mm -hmm. we, kind of, not they had, well, not we, we had to march through there and find. We got permission. Oh. Yeah. You get to pay two dollars for the tire to good landfill. What's that? You get to pay two dollars for the east tire for the landfill. Oh, that might be what it is now. It used to be a dollar and a quarter, but it might be two bucks. Tire yeah. Do the tires have to be in good condition? Um, okay, um, well, you had said you had two questions here. Yeah, my other question, you said earlier about um, how expensive it would be to actually completely make one of these homes. As far as about the size of the second home you said you made, you said it's a similar price to making a home out of like two white doors. Yeah. How much is that? Exactly. Well, um, about eighty dollars a square foot. Um, that that second home you were looking at, I sold it recently. I think I sold it for one hundred thirty-five thousand or thereabouts. Um, the 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 solar system, the electrical system, added a lot to the price. It was that that was seventeen thousand dollars. Plus, I bought a. I sold that with a generator that I paid, uh, a propane generator I paid 3000 for, not, not a, just a cheap one that it's going to die out, so, so that if you had ten, t 10 cloudy days in a row, you can turn on that generator and power, power the home with that. Um, but that's, that's a lot cheaper than using a gas generator and a lot less polluting. Of course, now you could get a solar system through Gallup Solar at less than half of that price. That's, that's, so that's correct. Yes. Yeah, I paid over three hundred dollars a a panel. Yeah, it's one hundred and twenty-five now for same panel. Hmm. Yep. Yeah. So, um, question over here: uh, Do the tires have to be in good condition? Um, kinda. <laughs> they 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 are. They don't have to have any tread. You just don't really want a tire that has um, has the. Um, Steel, steel belted part sticking out that it can hurt your hands um, because that can be <laughs> bad, not a safety fa factor. But other than that, it doesn't matter because they're going to be all covered up eventually. Um, I, I, we did some walls with just mud, just like the floors that I talked about. But um, <laughs> they got some. Wa it's easy to get water damage <laughs> if you have a leak somewhere. And I had a hot water heater, one of those on-demand hot water heaters, uh, freeze and leak all over, and it just the whole wall just kind of <laughs> fell down. So um, after that, I just built them out of stucco the walls. Um, 
You, you could use regular plaster too. You had a composting toilet at first. Did that did not work out in terms of odors or. No, no. <laughs> uh, that was one of the other evolving things. We had a solar toilet first. Mm. It was designed by Michael Reynolds, and he sold the plans for it before he ever tested it. Mm. Well, <laughs> they tested test. it up there, and they, they 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 quit using it themselves, and and then I got a solar toilet, and that worked fine. Um, it was a little noisy because it had an electric motor and my renter didn't like the noise. Um, but, um, um, but it works fine. I sold it to somebody recently. and <laughs> She says she's using it outdoors here in Gallup. Uh, <laughs> um, but, um, uh, yeah, no, a, a composting toilet would be fine if you're really trying to cut down on water use. The only problem with the composting toilet is if you have more than one or two people live in there. It's a, it, you can't keep up with the amount of waste that goes through it. And you, it's really not a good idea. But if it's just one or two people, it's fine. Um, um, what else? Will you have like any um, future projects like this? I hope not. <laughs> I want to stay married. <laughs> Actually, I promised my wife <laughs> that I wouldn't build another one until I paid off my house. So um, those all all my airships are paid for, but <laughs> or sold or paid for. But but um, yeah, um, and and I don't like being a landlord. It's not not fun I'm trying to collect rent and stuff. What about the electrical training? Uh, somebody has to have electrical training. I had a guy come down from uh, Santa Fe that did my electrical on that one that that I showed a lot of pictures of. Um, uh, Luis Rodriguez, I'm sure, could do it. He's the guy that Gallup Solar recommends uh, here. And um, actually, uh, John Margus did a lot of the wiring, but then uh, the guy from Santa Fe had to redo some of it because it wasn't right. Uh, just because he, he, he knew he wasn't the right person for it, but it's he just did it. unusual jobs in yeah. terms of Yeah, it is. It's unusual. Um, and um, yeah, you, you'd, have, you'd have to have special training to, mm -hmm. to do it. I, I didn't do any of the wiring. I pounded a few tires and let other people do most of the other work <laughs> because I was trying to hire people, give people employment. Um, what else? Um, I don't know if you've ever had to do this before. I remember you said it has to be on undisturbed earth, so it's kind of like the ground is naturally level and it doesn't move around at all. What if you really wanted to build it in a specific spot where it's not perfect like that? You just have to dig down to it. Can you? Do you have to? So if it's not level, you have to do a row of tires at the ground level that if it's unlevel like that was what the problem was here is the ground was sloping toward the east, and so they thought, well, we can just put some extra dirt here and pound it down. Well, what they should have done is put three more layers of tires on the lower side of it so that you had it on undisturbed earth. So you have to, you just have to dig down to the undisturbed earth and have more tires, more layers of tires going up. Can you actually lay a foundation of tires and fill them with dirt and have that, like, make it level yourself and put that, tires? That's down? really what I'm talking about doing, yeah. So in fact, I've done that. I um, I have a deck by my house here in town, and I wanted to extend that deck and put a greenhouse in there. And um, the foundation for that whole deck is is tires. That was exactly Just, question. Yeah, yeah. That's not unusual, by the way. A habitat, you know, we're built homes here in town. That's code. You know, when they excavate to do a crawl space or whatever we're doing, they dig out some dirt. That excavator with the big truck and the front loader is really good. He has to get that level ground, and we can't touch it. Until, and then we pour the concrete foundation on it. It's got to be undisturbed earth. That's what it's for as any, as build, as any build, because it'll settle if you don't leave it like it was. It's already settled, you know, you just want to disturb it. Just shave off what you don't need and put your concrete base on it. So to do it with tires and have that whole level packed with dirt is as good as a concrete foundation? Sure. Yeah. My, my, I don't know, I've had that greenhouse on that platform for 10 years and it, and it had a hot, a hot tub in it full of water, which is really heavy. That would have, <laughs> I used the hot tub for gardening because I used up too much electricity to 
to eat the hot tub. But um, but it, but when it had water in it, it didn't it didn't sink uh, or anything. It didn't settle. Um, you had a question here about do I don't want to do any more. Uh, I don't want to do any more. But I, I I'm I'm interested in helping people. They're going to be doing a workshop, I think. The EPA person down in Zuni uh, contacted me, and I I, I I told her I was willing, but they probably can get somebody from uh, Taos that can do a workshop down there. They, they could do a, um, I think it was like a couple of months, and build, actually build a structure down there. And uh, I have a friend up in, um, in Tisnaspas area that uh, that we're talking about building it. You know, using one of those 10-day chapter builds and building out of tires. <laughs>